This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this banner with text using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So uh, the first thing we want to do is set up our documents. So we'll go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set the display units to pixels. I'm going to turn off the page border and then close out of that. And we'll go to view. We're gonna want custom selected. We'll zoom in at one to one. And up here, I wanna make sure I have this button turned on that says snap to cusp nodes. And I'll open up the uh, align and distribute menu with this button over here. We're gonna want last selected chosen from this drop down, And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a square. So I'll come over to the squares and rectangles tool. And I'll hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And I'm going to take the opacity of that and bring that down about in half. And I'll take uh, I'll take this square and I'll make this green. And let me go to the Select tool and I'm going to hold Control and Shift. I'm just going to make this a little bigger. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you could press B on the keyboard for that. And I'm going to bring the cursor just outside of the left side of the square and I'm going to click to create a point there. Then, I, then I'm going to hold control and just click and drag this line straight through the square until it goes to the outside of the right side like that and click again. And Now we can let go of control and press enter on the keyboard so we have that line going through there. And I'm going to zoom in on this line by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel a couple of times. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go to the edit paths by nodes tool up here. And with this line selected, I'm just going to click on the left side of this line and just click and drag it up a little bit like that. And then I'll click on this node over here and I'll take this handle and I'll just bring that down like that. And I'll take this handle, bring that up. So we have this nice fluid curve going through here where it goes up and then dips back down and then back up to the baseline like that. And once we have a nice fluid curve like that, um, you can play with it, alter it a little bit. I recommend using these handles instead of clicking on the actual line. Uh, once we have it set uh, in a way that we like it, we can go to Path, Stroke to Path, and then we can go to the Select tool and hold Shift and click on this green square and go to Path, Difference, and then Path, Break Apart. And now we can click off of the graph and deselect everything. And I'm going to take this top object here and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And let me hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a little bit just to zoom back out. What I want to do now is take this shape and duplicate that by hitting uh, control D on the keyboard. And I'll make this red. And then I'll hold control and click and drag this shape down here about that far. And once we have it that far, we could hold shift and click on the green shape so we have them both selected. And go to path, difference. And once we've done that, I want to create another copy of this object by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I'll make this other copy red. I mean blue, actually. And then I'm going to hold Control and just click and drag this up a little bit. Maybe about that far, like that. And what I want to do now is grab the uh, Squares and Rectangles tool. And I want to click and drag and create a rectangle over the object like that. And I'm going to make this red just so we can differentiate it. And what I'll do next is... I'm going to go to the select tool, I'm going to hold shift, click on this blue shape, and click on the button over here that says center on the vertical axis, and that's going to center it up on that object right there. Now we can click off of it to deselect everything. And what I'll do next is I'll take this red object, and I'll hit control D to duplicate that again, and then I'm going to hold shift and click on the blue shape and go to path intersection. So we're left with that little area right there. And what I want to do next is take this red shape, click on that, and then just take this left side arrow and just bring this in a little bit, maybe about that far. And I'll take this right side, I'll bring that in a little bit as well, maybe about that far. Hold shift, click on the green shape, and go to path, difference. And if you notice here, the shape of the actual ribbon or the banner is starting to come together. So what I want to do next is let me just zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'm just going to hold control and move this up a little bit. And what I'll do now is I'll go to path, break to break apart. 
and click off of that to deselect everything. And then I'm going to hold control and take this green object on the right and just bring that up here like that. Because we want this we want this green object coming out of the bottom and this green one coming out of the top like that. And now what we'll do, I'll grab the uh, Bezier pen, keyboard shortcut is B, and I'll snap the cursor onto this corner right here and then click. And I'll hold control, bring this line straight up through the blue area and go ahead and click. And then we can let go of control and snap to this corner and then bring it back to the starting point and then click on that. And what I'll do next is I'll grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the green object and go to path difference. So it punches a hole through that green shape like that. And I'm going to grab the Bezier pen again, snap to this corner this time and click. Bring this line outside of the green shape, maybe about up to here, and then click snap to this corner and click and then back to the starting point and click and we'll go back to the select tool hold shift click on this green object and go to path uh, path difference and then path break apart and then hold shift and click on this green object to deselect it so we're just left with this little object in here and then we could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and you could actually click on this object right here and make that blue to match this and if you notice the shape is really coming together now. So what I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side, uh, only opposite since it's flipped upside down. I'm gonna go to the Bezier pen, snap to this corner, hold control, bring the line straight through like that, over to this corner and then back to the starting point. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the uh, green object and go to path difference. And again, we'll do this over here for this side, grab the Bezier pen, snap to this corner, bring this out here about that far, click over to this corner, back to the starting point, grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the green object and go to path difference and then path break apart, hold shift, click on that green object to deselect it. So we just have that selected and press delete on the keyboard. And then I'll take this shape right here and I'll make this blue. And let me press one of the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Now, if you notice here, we have the ribbon set. If you click and drag over all of it and bring the opacity up, and you can make it whatever color you want, there's your ribbon right there. But now what I want to do is add some text to it like I did in the thumbnail image. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to make the text going along the shape of this curvature right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the perspective or the envelope tool actually to uh, transform text so it fits the shape of this curvature right here but it has to go inside it has to be a little bit of a border going along the inside so that the text isn't touching the edges right here so to do that I'm gonna take this middle shape right here and I'm gonna duplicate that by hitting control D and I'll make that red and then I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool and I'm gonna hold shift and then just click and drag a selection going over the top nodes of this red shape right here. Only the top nodes have them selected, not the bottom ones. We don't want the bottom nodes selected. All of the top ones, once we have them selected, I'm gonna hold control and click and drag it down about that far like that. And we'll go back to the select tool, hold shift on the keyboard and click on the blue shape and just center it up on the uh, horizontal axis like that. And that's where the text is gonna go in that red area so that there's a little bit of spacing between the text and the edges. And you can click off of that to deselect everything. So let me press one to zoom back out to 100%. I'm gonna create some text to put in there. I'm gonna grab the text tool and I'll click on the canvas and I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna write the word text for this tutorial like that. Uh, I suggest using uh, all caps. If you use lowercase letters, it's not gonna, it, it's not gonna look right, but that depends on the font itself. Most fonts won't look good using lowercase letters with this style. So I recommend using all caps uh, I'm going to click on the uh, little T icon up here to get the text editor and let me grab that into my screen here. Uh, the font I'm going to work with, you could use any font you'd like, any any uh, you know standard font should work. I like to use League Gothic for this sort of thing, so I'm going to use League Gothic and hit apply, close out of that. Let me grab the select tool and bring this towards the center over here. I'm going to hold control and shift to scale this up like that. Maybe make that a little bigger. What we want to do is I'm looking at the letter T here and I'm looking at the size, the height of the red shape. And we want that to be somewhat, somewhat um, identical like this, like the height of the red shape versus the height of the, of the text. 
It doesn't have to be exact, just a general, uh, like a ballpark estimate like that. That's pretty good right there. And once I've done that, I'm gonna hold shift, click on the red shape, and center up the text on the vertical and horizontal axis like that and click off of the deselect everything. And what I'm gonna do now is grab the rectangle tool and I'm gonna click and drag to create a rectangle going over the text, over the letter T and going through the entire graphic like that. And let me make this green and bring the opacity of that down so I can see the letters beneath it. And I'll go back to the select tool and I want this to be the width of the letter T. Let me zoom in by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. We want this to be the same width as the letter T, or pretty close, doesn't have to be exact. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that by hitting Control D. I'll hold Control and move this over here. Make this the same size as the letter E. And we're going to do the same thing for each letter. So I'm going to do this for the letter X. And I'll create one more for the letter T. I'll put this over here. Make that a little smaller. And once we've done that, um, little bit that's a little less wide than the letter T so let me just adjust that there we go I'm gonna once we've done that I'm gonna hold shift and click on all of those green boxes and unify them together by going to path union and then I'll hold shift click on the red object center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that and go to path intersection and what I'll do now is I'm gonna take this text and move it out of the way maybe up here and I'll go to path object to path and then I'll ungroup the text so it's individual letters like that and bring the opacity of that down as well and let me zoom back in over this a little bit so what I'm gonna do now is let me click off of that to deselect everything I'm gonna take each letter and make it fit the shape of these four red shapes so to do that I'm going to use the perspective envelope tool I'll click on this first letter I'll go to path path effects and I'll click the plus icon to add a new path effect and from this list, I'm looking for perspective envelope right there. Go ahead and click add. And from this drop down, we want to choose envelope deformation instead of perspective. And once we've done that, we can click on the edit paths by nodes tool. And if you zoom in, you may not be able to see it very well on my screen, but there's two different kinds of nodes here. There's white nodes and then there's gray nodes. The gray nodes let you edit the actual shape of the object itself. We're not going to be using those in this tutorial. What we're looking at is the white nodes in all four corners. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because sometimes it's easy to differentiate the two. Because like the letter T, for example, there's going to be a gray node. If I move this out of the way, you're going to see there's a gray node right there because it's the, uh, the uh, top left corner of the letter T. So if you're not grabbing the white nodes, what we're doing is not going to work for you. It's going to distort the text in a different way. So make sure you're grabbing the white node in each corner for what we're doing next. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the white node down here and snap that into the bottom left corner of that shape. And I'll do the same thing with this bottom right node right here. Snap that into that corner. Same thing up here, top left and then top right. And once we've done that, we can finalize it by going to path, object to path. And what I'll do now is click on the letter E and do the same thing. Click on the plus icon to add a new path effect. Perspective envelope should probably be uh, selected already. Go ahead and click add change the drop down to envelope deformation and again grabbing the white nodes and snapping them into the corresponding corners of the red box like that put that in there put that in there and again we're going to finalize it by going to path object to path i'm going to do the same thing for the letter x we're going to add a new path effect change it to uh, envelope deformation snap the nodes into their uh, respective corners and finalize it by going to path object to path and finally I'll do this for the letter T uh, snap this into that corner this one down here once you've done this for a few letters you should get the hang of it it's pretty um, it becomes almost automated once you get the process down and finalize it by going to path object to path okay so now that we've done that we can grab the select tool we can close out of the path effects menu we don't need that anymore and let me click off of the graphic to deselect everything and just take these red boxes over here and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them let me press one on the keyboard to zoom out to hundred percent I'm gonna click and drag over all of the text just the text right there bring the opacity all the way up I'm gonna make that text white 
And then I'm going to take the blue shape right here, and I'm going to hold shift and click on the other two blue shapes and bring the opacity all the way up. And we can go ahead and make them a shade of red. If you want, you could even, let me click off of this. If you could take, you could take these two little uh, flaps over here and make them a darker shade like that. Or you could just leave it as it is. And if you notice here, the, uh, the uh, negative space here, it's supposed to be kind of like a shadow where like the fold, the crease of the fold here is casting a shadow. And it doesn't really work on a lighter background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to File, Document Properties, and where it says Background Color, let's click on that little white stripe right there. I'm gonna darken up the background color like that, maybe make it like a dark shade of blue. Something like that, like I did for the thumbnail. Um, yeah, that works. And now you can see it's it's come together a little better, a little bit better. I actually like these red, I actually like these flaps being the original shade of red. So um, one last final step would be to click and drag over all of this. And if you want, you can click on it again to get the rotation handles and take this top arrow up here and give that a little bit of a shear to the right like that. I think that looks pretty good. I like how that looks with it sheared to the right. But you don't have to do that. You can just hit Control Z to undo that. Or if you want, you can take this whole thing, hit Control D to create a copy of it. I just have one copy where it's straight like that and another copy where it's sheared a little bit to the right like that. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating that uh, banner with text using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.